Uh, hi team, I hope you're all well. Um, yeah, fair to middling, thank mm -hmm. you. Uh, I'm a little bit confused about CPU usage and DLSS presets. If performance mode, whilst my TV resolution is set to 4K, essentially upscales and renders 1080p to 4K, does that mean the CPU is taxed more because it has to render it at a lower res initially? Traditional low res is more CPU bound if you have a super powerful GPU. My brain can't make sense of it. Thanks, I hope you have a lovely dinner. Thank you. Um, we'll talk about dinner shortly, Alex. But yeah. Um, uh, yeah. well, yes, obviously, the whole point of DLSS is to essentially uh, increase performance, right? Which is um, basically meaning that, yes, you're running internally at a lower resolution. Obviously, there's various bits and pieces that add to the, to the rendering load. Um, but yes, the whole point of it is that it increases the frame rate. Now, the higher the frame rate goes... Um, then obviously you may well not be fully utilizing the CPU because your CPU can't keep up with feeding the GPU. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've recently been looking at like um, brand new CPU tests, and there are a lot of games where if you run them at four, um, um, 4K resolution DLSS performance mode, which looks fine, by the way, mm -hmm. you will hit CPU limits. Just a couple of examples off the top of my head. Boulder's Gate 3... Once you once you're in a sort of populated area, um, Dragon's Dogma, um, to another example where you could easily be CPU limited. You don't really need a forty ninety, but you know basically the balance changes. Um, yeah, a lot of games, um, even Horizon Forbidden West. I you know when you're in a sort of um, town area, you could be CPU Start limited. Start getting CPU limited there without frame dread. Yep. And uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator, any kind of city, DLSS. I mean, you don't even need DLSS at you that point. You'll be DLSS. CPU limited. So, um, yes, that that is the answer. Uh, hopefully your brain can make sense of it. But on a, <laughs> on a broader level, Alex, this is kind of bringing home to me that the, the, the sort of established um, uh, sort of internet wisdom of, of how a PC should be balanced is kind of shifting, right? Because it's typically been the case that, you know, the CPU is not as important as the GPU. But with the arrival of um, DLSS particularly, you can find yourself CPU limited even with a you know with a forty ninety or even lower yeah look at Hogwarts Legacy for example you you know it doesn't really matter what GPU you've got any high end GPU you'll be CPU limited on yeah. that Jedi Survivor I was looking at um, yeah Jedi Survivor and Flight Simulator I was looking at fifty percent GPU utilization on a forty ninety it's brutal yeah uh, it's it's not only this you have to be worrying about well you have to be worried about cpu utilization and being cpu limited just because i also think we want just said it earlier consistent experiences and as soon as you start being cpu limited frame times are less consistent in general and these games like it's not just the 4090 but you kind of want to stock up a, on a cpu as much as possible to a certain degree if you are going to be targeting high frame rate anyway yeah which this person definitely is because they said 4K and they're talking about DLSS performance, I highly doubt they're talking about sub-60 experiences usually. Um, so in this case, yeah, it's 100% something to worry about even at 4K, even in a VRR context, because not a lot of modern game engines and AAA games can really do high frame rate really well. Yeah. It's hard. It's really interesting, right, John, because... Um, uh there's been this argument that DLSS is like been an, uh, has been a crutch for poor optimization. But what I'm actually finding is that DLSS frame generation is a crutch for poor CPU utilization. It is. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, wasn't that, that's kind of, I assume, part of the reason that it was developed in the first place is because they knew their GPUs were really pushing performance peaks yeah. and the CPUs just weren't there yet and they're right. still not. And this was like, well, how can we leverage our GPUs to essentially overcome some of these CPU bottlenecks? And that, yeah. that's what it does. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's basically the graphics card manufacturers trying to make up for the shortcomings of CPUs. And it actually I think makes things really interesting because, you know, let's say you are on 4K performance mode. Obviously, you can move up to 4K quality and you probably won't be impacted that much. But more to the point, what you can do is actually invoke more visual features you know go harder on raid facing do you know use the gpu in different ways 
So that's actually been quite interesting. But yes, I mean, we've not really been covering CPUs in any great depth. I mean, uh, for, for a while now, but I do think that there is a case here that we need to start taking it a bit more seriously because you know DLSS and you know and poor CPU utilization in games. They, there was this glorious period, I think, during the eighty seven hundred K period where people were saying, "Oh, it, you know, you don't really need to worry about the CPU anymore. Any game could be run at sixty FPS." Mm-hmm. And you know, I was just thinking to myself, "Have you played Kingdom Come Deliverance?" <laughs> it's like <laughs> no, no, yeah. But you, you know, we're reaching the point now where you know graphics are scaling, CPUs aren't so much, and um, you know you kind of need frame generation to to get yourself back into that high refresh rate window on a lot of these AAA games. But yeah, I'm, I'd really like to do a sort of quantifiable sort of analysis now. 7800X3D, even there, you know, the, the fastest we gaming CPU, mm-hmm. um, having issues there. 